Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Report number 34460, Class Alpha. Year 2011. Location details. We were on a dirt road, Indian Service Route 32, going south into the Chuska Mountains, about 5 to 8 miles south of Indian Service Route 32, Highway 134. Nearest town, Sheep Springs, New Mexico. Nearest road, Narbonne Pass, Indian Service Route 32, Highway 134. Observed. It was Saturday, July 16, 2011, about 12.30 a.m., early last Saturday morning. We were going to the Cheska Mountains on the Navajo Reservation for a family reunion. We just left the main paved highway through Narbonne Pass, Indian Service Route 32, Highway 134, between Sheep Springs, New Mexico and Crystal, New Mexico. We went south on a dirt road, Indian Service Route 32, into the Chuska Mountains. We were about five to eight miles into the mountains when we came upon a small hill that curved towards the east, then to the south. As we approached the hill to go up, the road quickly turned right. As we reached the top, we saw the full moon and it lit up a flat green pasture that was on top of the hill. As we made the turn to the right, I noticed a big black figure standing. As I looked at it, it stood with the full moon behind it so that all I could see was a black outlined form. I kept my eyes on the figure while making the turn right. I said to my wife, did you see that? She said, what? I said, something is standing over there by the road. As I looked, I noticed that the figure was standing by a small pond, which was about 10 to 15 feet from the road. I could see the figure's reflection in the pond along with the full moon. I would say when I first saw it, it was about 75 feet away. As we got closer, our headlights turned to the right away from the black figure, but I still could see it because the moonlight was so bright. It just stood there, still, as if it was waiting for us to leave. I told her I was going to pull the truck onto the edge of the road. The road being dirt, and because of the rain, it had been plowed, so there was a ridge of dirt on both sides of the road. So I pulled the vehicle left towards the Bigfoot to flash my headlights on it. As my headlights flashed the Bigfoot, it turned. We could see the legs turn, the arms turn, and it turned running away from us up a small hill into the trees. It was a quick, smooth run. I mentioned to her that it ran ninja-like, smooth and stealthy. In less than five to six seconds, it was in the trees. As it was turning and running, we didn't see any clothing buttons shining from the headlights. We saw a huge mass, a body running on two legs. We never saw any eyes. We noticed the legs and arms, and for sure it ran on two legs up the hill. We were about 30 feet away from it when it ran up the hill. We could see that it was not a bear or human. It stood at least 7 to 8 feet tall. It was wider and taller than a person. After it ran away, we were in shock. We sat quietly in the truck, still for about 15 seconds. Then all of a sudden, my oldest daughter screamed and said, Daddy, what was that? I was shocked that she was awake the whole time. I thought only my wife and I saw it, but she was terrified, asking me over and over, Daddy, what was that? I couldn't say anything but tell her it was a Bigfoot. My wife and I aren't crazy, nor are we believers of Bigfoot until now. In fact, we were the biggest skeptics, but we can't deny what we saw. I have to believe it was real. My wife also admitted that she saw it too. As we first approached the hill, just like I did, she just wasn't sure at the time if it was the same thing I saw. It was eerie and exciting at the same time. We also went back there on Sunday to look for tracks. There weren't any. The ground was extremely hard where it ran up the hill. Along the pond, we saw hoof prints from cows, dog prints, deer prints, no noticeably Bigfoot prints. By the way, the pond was only about 10 to 15 feet wide. It was just 
runoff of rainwater. So it isn't always there during the year. It seemed to me that it was not wanting to be seen. I believe if I didn't turn my headlights towards him, it would have probably stood there until we passed by. Then it would have left. I think it was very intelligent because it watched us. And even before I could get the headlights turned onto him, he had already started to turn away from us. It had to have known what we were going to do next. That is probably why we didn't see any eyes. I have lots of stories from my grandma about Bigfoot. She said they have been here since the beginning of time, and that they were like us, living among us, until they saw humans start to fight among themselves. Then they didn't want any part of us anymore, so they went into hiding. They know that if they kill a human or make contact with one, they know that nothing good will come of it, so that is why they stay in hiding. Also noticed, after our encounter, we have heard a lot more people have witnessed Bigfoot in that same area. We also observed that the Bigfoot noticed us on the hill. It seemed to me that it stood still until it noticed we were turning towards it. Because it was already turning before our headlights shined on it, that is why we didn't see any eyes or face. Other witnesses, three, myself, my wife, and my oldest daughter. We were driving late and we were all facing forward and all witnessed it together. Other stories, yes, I also heard that many more sightings have happened because of the fires in the Arizona mountains. I talked to a Navajo Nation ranger and he stated that a lot more deer, elk, and other animals have migrated into the Chuska Mountains because of the fires. Time and conditions, 12.30 a.m. early Saturday morning. There was a full moon out and the lighting was bright. It just finished sprinkling and the roads were damp. Environment. The area was mountains, the exact place we saw the Bigfoot. It was on a flat green pasture just above the tree line. Forest pine trees, the pool of water it was standing by was runoff from rainwater. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator T.F. Zamiski. I spoke with this witness by phone on 1-13-13. There was a light rain falling as they drove toward the subject. With the <coughs> moon shining through a break in the clouds, they could see something was standing near a pool of water. As he turned his lights toward the subject, it began to move. In the headlights, they saw a dark brown hair covered animal turning away, then running over the hill. The movement was like a person person but very smooth and quick. In seconds it was gone. They sat and discussed what just happened then moved on. About three minutes had went by since they first saw it. The road they were on continued around the other side of the hill but too much time went by to see anything. They were compelled to return the next day to look for tracks in the daylight but unfortunately the ground was too hard. This area is at about 8,960 feet with areas of clear meadows and clusters of trees just east of the Arizona border on the Navajo Reservation. Being Native American and growing, in the, growing up in this area, he heard many stories about these animals but was always skeptical until this opportunity came along. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help.